You have now entered a world of confusion, delusion, intrusion. For some might speculate you have seen the latest episode of the hit YouTube series Grab Bag. But you haven't. It's only in the mind's eye. This is the Grab Bag Zone. I really don't know what that was, guys. So basically, um, I went into Tropic Thunder recording a first impression of it. And then I started recording some post impressions after watching the movie again. And I was kind of bored, so I kind of felt like, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. I felt like doing an alternate uh, version of my first grab bag review. So you can call this the first episode if you want. Or you can call it the second episode. I don't know what I'll name it. I'm just kind of, for the working title name, I'm naming it the alternate first episode of Grab Bag. So I just wanted to try out a different movie. I wanted to see if there was a little more of an ebb and flow there. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and grab the first, second, second, first movie for Grab Bag. Oh. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Uh. I felt my soul crushed on this. And this is a point, you know those points in life where you really just have to bear your crosses? I got it out of the way from the get-go. I owned up to the fact that my favorite movie as a kid was Batman and Robin. While the original, no, nah, I don't want to call it that. While the 2007 Michael Bay Transformers has aged not significantly better, then nine, five other movies. I don't know how many other movies there are. Fortunately, this is the only Transformers movie I own. One, two, three, four, five. I was right on my second guess. I stopped watching the movies after like three or four. I don't even remember. I think I watched like half the one with Mark Wahlberg in it. But, you know, as disgraced as I am to have picked out this movie... It's not the worst. It's not the worst. It's not the best. It's dumb fun. I think something I talked about with my Tropic Thunder review is that with Tropic Thunder, they're so in the loop with the jokes that they're making. The Michael Bay couldn't be more out of the loop. I saw something the other day that was almost this Mandela effect sort of thing that someone refused to remember. <laughs> That Bumblebee, yes, the Transformer Bumblebee, peed on John Turturro. Go check out that video. I don't remember the name of it. This this movie, uh, this movie's rough. I almost want to just put it back on the shelf, but you guys deserve better than that. I'm going to sidestep uh, the story. Basically, robots land on Earth. Actually, no, that's that's pretty decent appraisal I can get. Robots land on Earth. They need the AllSpark. Decepticons want it for evil. Autobots want it for good. This is the most it sticks to canon and the most cohesive story you'll get in the Transformers movies. Even then, there's this weird subplot with Anthony Anderson like trying to hack into Homeland Security, Megan Fox being sexualized, pretty much the entire movie. What a historic day in history. This is the same day that SpaceX is about to do a historical launch, but more historically, I picked out 2007 classic Transformers for my review. If you don't know the story of Transformers, uh, Michael Bay Transformers says, that's okay, because neither do I. Neither does anyone. I don't even think Michael Bay knows the story. 
of Michael Bay's Transformers. They want to defeat Megatron. Megatron wants to defeat Optimus. You know the gist, but then again, even that wasn't enough for Michael Bay. There needed to be these hacking into Homeland Security, hacking into the FBI subplots, and... Of course, you have the super flashy, super saturated cinematography. It's Michael Bay, and Michael Bay is an infamous household name. 12-year-old me adored this movie. That's why 12-year-old me doesn't just have the DVD of it. It has the two-disc special edition slipcase. And the only reason it's on DVD, not Blu-ray, is because I don't even think Blu-ray existed then. So that... That shows you how old I am. Both this and Tropic Thunder are DreamWorks movies. If you even dared to say that this movie was character driven or that the characters had any inkling of motives, I just, I don't know what I'd say to you. The action is at least cohesive. The characters sort of have color to them so you can tell when they're transforming who's kind of sort of fighting who but even this all the way back in 2007 it's just a gray dubstep visual blob but i will say this i think that's why it amazed me so much is because for 2007s 2007s token starring liam neeson this movie had phenomenal cgi phenomenal special effects and i think that's why i loved it and Truth be told, there's a part of me that still does admire that level. Of course, unfortunately, that really did kickstart Michael Bay's career to start making just CGI action, blurry, bomb, explosion festivals. Michael Bay can tell a story. Um, I think he tells a great story while having great action set pieces in his 90s movies, early 2000s even. Um... Bad Boys 2, Bad Boys, The Rock, Armageddon, and they're melodramatic, they're campy, but they're still stories. This He took the typical Transformers canon, not even Transformers canon, just Alien Invasion canon, good aliens land, bad aliens land, the good aliens want to destroy the bad aliens, and he just added a bunch of flair to it, which, I mean, listen, I wouldn't dare call Michael Bay an auteur but the textbook definition i believe of an auteur is someone who takes an already pre-established property and adds their own look to it and transformers is definitely a pre-established property and he definitely definitely added his own look to it but you know what never mind